What's going on guys? Welcome back to an updated deck video for Link Evolution. Today I'm bringing in Maldolches with some of the new support they got with the update. They didn't get a huge amount of support as more of their cards came out after Dual Overload and Eternity Code, but surprisingly the deck has improved dramatically even with the little support that we got in the game. I'm going to butcher some of the pronunciations which I probably do in every video, so I'm going to probably come up with nicknames here and there for some of the new lollies. One of the most important new cards that really makes this deck pop is a new Maldolce monster, Petting Sessoir. Okay, I've really tried my best on that one. We'll go with Petite Princess or something. This card is amazing as it can be special summoned from the hand if you have no monsters in the graveyard, which isn't too hard for this deck. When it is special summoned either by its own effect or another effect, it can special summon another Maldolce monster from the main deck by reducing its level by 1 and restricting you to summoning Maldolches for the rest of the turn. This card is simply nuts as it accelerates your board presence enough to give you some lethal opportunities sometimes. Combining this with our old combo of Angeli and Hootcake, you can easily get 3 monsters out along with her as she can set up the other 2 and vice versa. She can also summon Pudding Sis from the deck and lower its level to 4 making that rank 5 chocolate mode easier to use with its secondary effect. Petite Princess alone does so much for the deck, but she wasn't the only new card we got. We got a new rank 4 Maldoche monster that helps a bit, and we'll just call her Teacher for now. Teacher has a nice quick effect that lets her detach a material to make a Maldoche immune to monster effects for the turn. While this may seem pretty stale, the more important secondary effect she has lets her shuffle 2 cards from any graveyard back into the deck when a Maldoche monster is sent to the grave, including the detached material. Thanks to this you have semi disruption for your opponent if they utilize their graveyard, but you can also special summon monsters on your opponent's turn if you have Maldoche ticket on the field, which can be great for Petite Princess yet again. I did misplay with this at times by not using it at ideal times in the video, as she can get you lethal on your turn if you need additional monsters to summon after you've exhausted your initial combo, so do not forget to use this effect offensively and then rank up to chocolate pudding sis. Those are the only two new cards we got, but the deck really popped with them along with the Master Rule Vision, so this was pretty fun for me to mess with. Since Petite Princess locks us into Maldoches anyway, Pot of Extravagance was amazing with its draw power, but since this is one of my few times using it, I did forget it can only be activated at the start of main phase 1 a few times. Hand traps are good as ever, especially with Hoot Cake, but do remember they can cuck your princess as it happened to me a few times. Aside from that, the deck plays mostly the same as it did before, just even better. Maldoche Queen Tierra Mizzou is still going to be your boss monster of choice for its absolutely absurd non-targeting effect to shuffle two cards back into the deck, which easily ruins a lot of boards in the game. This deck does struggle going first in my opinion, so I did try to shoot for second as the best turn one boards you can build will probably consist of fresh to start and teacher sadly with back row. A slight problem I did run into at times like you'll see on screen is I did sometimes open too many of my tech cards without any Maldoche starters. While this is good for slowing down the opponent, we can't really build up an offensive line so the start of this duel is pretty rough. I think my Maldoche lineup is pretty good so this was just my constant bad luck that I was having that night. Luckily we do have Nibiru in the event that our opponent sets up a strong board which is what it looks like is going to happen. Nibiru alone ended duels right when he hit the field so many times. So that was an easy win condition in this deck sadly a lot of the time. While there are opportunities for you, me to use Ash Blossom here, the duel before kind of intimidated me as I fell into a spot where I used Ash and then top deck Petite Princess. Since Ash would be in the grave she couldn't use her special summon effect which hurts a lot. At the same time using Ash could help set up her hoot cake so not having a Maldoche at all in our hand kind of made this a tough situation. Hope Harbinger is a problematic monster, so Nibiru definitely has to get something here no matter what. Our opponent has exhausted his hand entirely, and we know he has a lone galaxy soldier in his hand, so we should be able to slow him down for a bit until we get our plays rolling. Nibiru works well in this deck since we have removal with Queen Tierra Mizzou, but it is a risk right now since we can't make her, and our opponent's token has 8,000 attack. That's a lot more than I would have liked to deal with, but it is better than facing multiple dragons, a potential infinity later on in Hope Harbinger. Since our opponent still has a white stone summon left, we're finally forced to use Ash Blossom since we don't want to deal with any more strong monsters than we have to. Sadly, since we did draw into another Ash, I decided to set it since our opponent has a good lethal opportunity if he gets a strong monster on the field. 
This pretty much turns into a waiting game now, as we have to somehow survive against the Nibiru token until we get a rank 4 play into Tierra Mizu to get rid of it. Thanks to Stone, our opponent can summon Galaxy Soldier, and I decide it's best to negate its effect as once again, he can get a chance to summon Cyber Dragon Infinity if he gets another on the board, which can be another headache we do not want to deal with. There isn't much else for him to do except attack with the token, which will get pretty scary if we run out of monsters. Luckily we have Extravagance to try and improve our luck on our next turn, which we desperately need. My worst fears do happen though as we draw into the Petite Princess who cannot special summon herself thanks to the Ash Blossoms in the grave. Here things start getting scary as we still don't have a play and we are running out of time for one. The good thing is that we have a Maldoche monster, so with Maldoche ticket we can at least search Who Cake or Angeli if Princess gets destroyed on the field. I do fall asleep here though, and I forget to activate Ticket, but by switching our Nibiru to attack mode I'm pretty sure our opponent won't pass up the chance of 5000 points of damage. I'm not sure why Infinite and Permanence love me so much in this duel, as I'd rather have other cards right about now. Luckily, once again our opponent just sets a monster, so he is left with his lone Nibiru token attack again. Of course I draw into another brick, so now our only hope is that our opponent doesn't summon another monster that can run over Princess and give him lethal. This time I definitely have to activate Ticket, as this is our last turn that we have a chance to survive most likely. Call by the Grave isn't the worst card to use against this deck, as if our opponent does have a chance for another monster, it might involve the Graveyard in some way. Most of the time in these scenarios, it's really easy for me to give up, but because I know that all I need is one card to clear his board, I'm willing to let this play out until victory is impossible for sure. This deck had a few close calls like this on stream, especially with the last duel in the video, but it was entertaining to make the comebacks. Just like I said, our opponent has a way to revive his dragons, but thanks to the impermanence that loves us so much, we can negate the effect of the interesting relinquished anima who can't target set monsters and in turn negate his spell. It was a chance that our opponent could have played around my strategy of searching with Ticket by not attacking or using Anima to attack and then stealing Princess afterwards, which would have sucked. Thanks to the token destroying Princess though, we can finally search Who Cake and shut down our opponent at last. We could have also searched Angeli here, but I was in such a rush to go into the rank 4 play, I didn't stop to think about it. This pretty much wrapped things up, as with Who Cake we can now special summon Princess from the deck and get Angeli from the deck, which has its level lowered to 3, so we have to tribute her off for Messing Gelato, which is level 4. Alternatively, it might have been better just to go Pudding Sis off of Princess's effect, since we already have Ticket and Chateau, but this is fine too. Thanks to us having Ticket, we can special summon another monster once Tierra Mazu's effect is activated as well, for even more damage. This is the end of the duel though, as our opponent knows what Tierra Mazu is capable of, so I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video, and like, comment, and subscribe.